Hi, I am Hi. with a group and we are going to be working with, I'm um, doing land alchemy for the land um, called the Miller Brothers Ranch or Refugio. Is that the correct pronunciation? Well, yeah, and actually I realized Morgan calls it the Old Growth Canyon. Old Growth okay. Canyon, okay. So we have different names for it, but the address, and it's the location of the Fairy Congress yeah. this year. And so before the Fairy Congress, a group of us um, met in an immersion land alchemy program I was guiding. Um, and we tuned into the land, the historical imprints, we tuned into contracts, we tuned into summer was getting um, connection with a buffalo spirit, we tuned into some mm -hmm. trees, ancient ones during workshop I taught as well. So, and I know there's a lot more things and sometimes what happens when I go into another state, like I don't always remember cause I'm altered and then I come back. And so I'd love refreshers and um, yeah, anyone else that has um, like, we can talk about, you know, more to fill everyone in and then kind of go into more of a meditative journey and see um, so yeah, really this came about too, just to share that Summer had contacted me um, and was really getting a message about, well, like our workshop, the workshop we were in was really sort of the initiation of the season for these, the Fairy Congress and the sister events, the plants and chant and um, um, singing live. And so when that season's over, there was this call to, well, how can we kind of communicate with the fairies, with the, the spirits of the land? Um, like, are there things that we can do that will help the land kind of feel complete with what we did? Is there anything we need to do to close it up more for the season? Um, or yeah, just to keep the communication going and not just, you know, one off. I know we've been doing things all, you know, all along many different people but I love the idea of really working over time. And just for people who aren't as familiar, I know I have, um, there's Sandy and Danielle who are um, in my Patreon group and other land alchemy work. Um, um, people from different places and different ways they've worked with me or that aren't necessarily familiar with Fairy Congress or the land as much. Um, so yeah, any way we can fill people in and um, share more about it, but it's also great to get like fresh eyes on places and, and yeah, just see like from everybody, there's always a new kind of ideas and things. And um, I think there's something else I'm going to say, but I'll, um, let me see what else. Yeah, it'll come along as we go. So yeah, I know we talked to Morgan too, um, Lindsay um, recently, and he shared some things, but I know you, Lindsay, oh yeah, I wanted to introduce Lindsay. She is the organizer of the Fairy Congress. And so she's a big part of why it's there and organizing the whole event and has a lot of knowledge herself on working with land and spirits. And of course, all that beautiful work she does as well as the organization. So yeah, why don't we have you um, take it over, Lindsay, to start with and just talk about kind of updating whatever you want to share. Um, all right, so yeah, the Fairy Congress has been there two years now and the first year was a little rough. I had actually never even been there before the Fairy Congress went there. So it was all totally new to me. Um, so this year was great was in that we had already established some connection with the beings there and they were really happy to have us back and they were excited about continuing they were like oh wow this is fun let's keep doing this so then so yeah since i don't even know the owner it's like i'm several steps away removed from the owners so i did start to ask my contact about what he knows about the future of the land because the owners are they're a pair of brothers both in their 80s um and, and both you know on their way on their way exiting <laughs> you know not not necessarily quickly, but also 
you know, you can see that they're becoming less, less present. Um, and then they have a younger man who is a caretaker. I believe he might be in his seventies. Um, so his name is Stan. So the person that I talked to is Morgan who has held events there, I believe since 2014. Morgan talks to Stan, the caretaker. Stan talks to the brothers who are the owners. <laughs> so we have this chain. Um, so I asked Morgan about, you know, since the brothers are in their 80s, you know, usually if there's any preservation desires, you need to set it up before they die. Um, it has to be, you know, recorded in their wills. Um, in order to pass smoothly. So I asked him, like, does he know? Um, and he said the brothers are aware that there is a desire for the land to continue as it is and that the brothers also have this desire. You know, they've stewarded it for however, I think it's been in their family maybe for generations. Um, but they would like it to continue as it is. Um, and Morgan's sense was that Stan was probably the person who might be the one handling everything when the time comes. So, and, and the, the way that it is now, Morgan is a very good relationship with him in that he's investing money in the property like he said that he's paying six thousand dollars for a new well pump and so they can see the owners can see that morgan is really interested and responsible um so it feels like that's becoming a really good relationship um um we have a good relationship with morgan <laughs> so um yeah, so uh, I mean, at the end of, of that conversation with Morgan, it's not like everything feels totally like, oh, yeah, we're set. But it did feel more positive, you know, because before that, I had no idea. And it felt very, um, just very uncertain. Um, so after that conversation, it did feel like, okay, there are some, some positive relationships that are, um, acknowledged and, um, it, it did feel somewhat hopeful that this could be a longer term relationship if desired. Of course, yeah, for us, the site holds certain challenges, but I think our, our focus right now is just on the, the land continuing. Yeah. And um, thanks for that update. Just to add to that, like it's not just a human concern. When we were meditating yeah. with the spirits of the land, we were getting a lot of communication from them that they wanted us humans to be very... Um, to really work on bringing about a stability, a security, a sense that this was ongoing in the future. So we're not just talking about the human stuff here, just to let everyone know, like this was very much an important thing for the fairies and spirits and the trees to feel better about the longevity of their home. Um, and I know someone saw Bobcat on the way in at the Fairy Congress, and I thought that was a sign like, okay, this is one of the few wild areas around there that could have a Bobcat because there's a lot of farmland all around that's all cleared and open, you know, very vast and open, just like to the east of Salem, Oregon. So, um, yeah. And also just to say the land felt much better this year. It's had kind of crunchy, funky, sort of, congested energy but this year even before we started our workshop like some of it because we had a lot of rain in the spring um, but it the energy felt like way better um, 
So I'd love for Summer to talk, but before I just want to connect in with everyone. So we have um, Sandy from Texas. We have Danielle, you can't see, but she's here from White Salmon, um, Summer. And then Lindsay, you just talked to, Sky. And then there's one other person, I'm not sure who it is. Would you like to introduce yourself? It's Rebecca. Oh, hi, great, another hi. patron. She's from Arizona, um, uh, Flagstaff, near there. Um, so we have some good um, different locations. So um, yeah, I'd love it. Summer, would you like to share anything more about like what? Yeah, anything you wanna share, we'll just leave it open. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, during Camilla's workshop, I connected with um, a Buffalo spirit who is actually um, native. Um, so there's like a shape-shifting aspect of, of them. Um, so it's like a native human, but also a Buffalo spirit. And um, they basically said that they they were not originally from that land but they had found sanctuary there and were part of the network of beings that are guardians of the land um and and so the communication was um just making sure that um that that spirit was still welcome there um regardless of you know what activities were happening and that they wanted to be an active communication um, about the land and intending it and things like that. And um, so one of the things that I did, um, Brenda Salgado um, gave me this beautiful um, uh, Buffalo um, sort of matrix um, thing. And I also took some um, soil and water from the land. And so I'm going to put in the chat um, uh, a photo of um, this, which is on my altar now. And I've been able to have pretty clear communication with this Buffalo spirit through, um, through this. And so I've tuned in with him just before coming on the call as well. So um, he's very present and is very excited to, um, yeah, to be working with all of us. Um, so there's a lot of gratitude. For this connection Great. yeah i can pull that up for a moment on screen share so people can see it <clears throat> can you guys see it oh yes that'll be a nice um oh that's gorgeous tune in wow great so um thank you for sharing that What's in the jars around? Um, yeah, so um, the one at the top uh, is obsidian. Um, and mm. then um, to the bottom uh, left is the soil along with some rose quartz. And okay. then to the bottom um, right is the water with some Amazonite. All right. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. Now, did you make that um, um, cloth or whatever is in the hoop? Was that something you made? Um, I didn't make the cloth behind it, the red cloth, but the, um, oh, uh, it's a wood cutting. And it was given to me by oh. Brenda Salgado, who um, was a presenter at the Fairy Congress. Oh, okay. Yeah. A wood cutting. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. Great. Um, yeah, and let's see, I guess just briefly a couple of the things that did come up too during our class were um, kind of layers of contracts, which we worked to release. We worked to release um, energies that connected people to others, to the land. So we did work on that, cords and um, attachments and things, cleared emotions, um, historical levels. I don't really remember all the details of that one, but um, yeah, so I think that's good to start with. And then 
what I thought we could do is um, I'll do kind of a little opening um, to ground and then I'm gonna do some offerings for the, um, for the tribes um, of that area. And when we do that too, if you wanna do um, tune into the tribes of where you are in your lands and um, kind of consider the um, offering to your own local land. Before you start, Camille, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, two things have come up for me in preparation. Yeah. And I think you all have probably covered it, but in my background in education on clearing land and property, uh, it's critical to get the owner of that site's permission. So that sounds like the two gentlemen. Um, were you able to actually ask them if it was okay to do this work? Anybody? Um, we asked permission. Like I always ask permission for everything. So part of that process of doing the workshop and doing mm -hmm. the work that I've done on the land has always had that. That includes. But the, did you actually? But not. Did you actually talk to the owners? Because um, there is. I haven't. Energy but I'm not the one. Okay. In, yeah. So I don't yeah. know, Lindsay. Do you have anything to say? I kind of feel that Morgan supports all this work that we're doing. This was a specific workshop. This was what we were doing. So this mm -hmm. was an invitation for me from Lindsay. Lindsay to Morgan. Morgan working with them. So even though it's not a direct from me to them, I do mm -hmm. feel that blessing is here. Okay. And I can feel that energetically. Does that feel okay. better for you? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, there's entanglements if you don't. Um, oh yeah, for and sure. And the yeah, and the other thing I I brought it up on Google Earth and I noticed um, there's a Dickens Cemetery. Um, maybe outside of the property line, I'm not sure, but was that um, dealt with in any way? Did you feel no. a need? I didn't know about to it. Do any... You saw a cemetery? Oh. Yeah, it's called Dickens Cemetery. Um, it looks like it's just on the outside of a new area of tree plantings. Um, I is that when I saw that or summer. I'm oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because okay, the area we're describing is all wooded. Mm -hmm. Whole mm -hmm. thing except for there's a pond and like some cleared land with some and then building yeah. areas. But um, I don't know. Maybe if that came up, maybe it's something you could tune in when we. No, go it's on different. I mean, if you zoom in and get the lot lines, it's on a different property. In different property. Yeah, it oh, sounds like it's kind the of way you describe so. it, the way yeah. you described it, yeah. although it could have, you know, an impact. Um, even well, I did ask line. if um, there were any issues, any discordant um, energies that uh, were troubled uh, or that needed clearing. And I got to know, but okay. I just wanted to bring that up. It, okay. it may come Great. through um from past life stuff okay so, yeah um, thanks yeah. for checking that out and um mm -hmm. bringing our attention because i wasn't aware of that okay um okay cool is there anything else that's surfaced before or right now or anything bring to the table no. okay all right so um just get comfortable and yeah, take a couple deep breaths. We'll connect in with our hearts and our divine selves first. And we're just going to ask to align ourselves with beautiful Gaia, Sophia, Mother Earth, her crystalline grid, her spirit. And just let ourselves ground deeply into the mother, into nature, into all our loving spirits we work with. 
And just to ask for any clearing, if there's anything in your field that needs to go, just ask to clear and release. And you can imagine sacred geometry all around you to set sacred space. And then opening your crown, your branches to the sun, the great central sun, cosmic sun, connect with that crystalline grid, solar crystalline grid, the sun. Let that energy flow to your crystalline grid as well. And then we'll anchor ourselves in each direction with Mer, Fe, Hele, Nom, the water, the air, the fire, and the earth. And we call in our guardian dragons in each direction, or whoever you call in anchor that space. And just bring your heart to the center of this work, your presence, your heart, your neutrality, your love. And so I'd like to make an offering to start with to the land, this beautiful, um, ranch, refugio, land, whatever we want to call it, this site of the Fairy Congress. And so I want to give permission to Gaia to connect with, for all of us to connect with her, to weave the circle together as a group, as a community, as a land, with the land council, and permission to work with this land to work with this land council, the trees and the animals and the fairies and elementals, dragons, gnomes, myrrh, indigenous spirits, star nation, angels, devas, all these beautiful beings. I'm gonna put some rose petals down. Just ask for that permission for all of us to be doing this work in being available for bringing harmony, clearing, awakening, really listening to what it is that we can support in this land council or the land. I'm gonna light a candle to ignite the spirit. I've got some tobacco. So if you wanna um, honor the spirit, indigenous ancestors where you live, for me, it's the Cowlitz, Chinook, and Yakima. And then we wish to honor and ask for those healed and whole ancestors that wish to work with us um, on this land of the Kalapayans, Kalapayans, which is now called Confederated Tribe of Grand Room and the Confederated Tribe of the Silits. So we'll open and offer them, asking permission to work with them if they so choose. And just opening these intentions to um, first off really listen um, if there's areas that were coming up in the discussion or for you personally, feel free to go into that. Um, and then we'll have little breaks where we can share and then go back in to kind of see how it flows. But I'd like to, um, to ring this bell. This is a bell we used um, during the event and the fairies love it. So it's kind of the, the calling of them. <laughs> Let me turn on my sound here. Imagine 
that there's a group of us in a circle and all these beings are coming in the circle to join us in community and those that wish to speak or communicate can even move to the center but just open to any impressions words energies healing I'm just doing some symbols that came in to do symbols for the land. Oh, and I am going to put this Imperial Garnet Essence out as an offering to the spirits. So I'm kind of feeling called to do some energy work um, and lay those symbols. Some grid work as well. Mm -hmm. Just like harmonizing. And requests for more rainbows, rainbow colors. Can you turn your sound off now? Your what? Original, your original sound. Turn it off? Yeah. Oh, is that better? Traffic noise in the back. Thank you. Should we just share what we're getting? Yeah, why don't we do a sharing? I I got Sasquatch coming in, and um, they said they don't normally work in this area. It's kind of isolated, but they are willing to kind of, the way they put it was dip their toe in. Um, <laughs> but with them, we infused the whole canyon with this emerald. Um, it was like emerald essence, so it was green, but also held the vibration of an actual emerald, which I believe is grounding. Um, Beautiful. Also, yeah, to support the the green. So emeralds too, a lot of heart energy. Mm -hmm. I always think of Venus, that love energy. I love that. Yeah, there was um, kind of a council. I um, a big, very large blue fairy being came in to want to work as part of the council. Um, uh, I haven't worked with them before, um, but 
um, they were there with um, some of the um, indigenous from that land came as well as the Buffalo spirit and his elders um, as well. And they they kind of wanted to be around in circle. Um, and whatever you were doing with the symbols like felt very grounding. They appreciated that. And um, some sort of like rainbow flame um, was created actually when you said they want more rainbows that's what was happening right there it was like a rainbow mm -hmm. flame um, that seems to be installed in kind of a central area of the land um, to help I don't know with transformation that needs to happen yeah I love that it's kind of like that central campfire right but it's a etheric rainbow flame mm -hmm. something like that I just opened my eyes and I saw um, rainbows right in front of me on the seat cushion from the light coming through one of my crystals in the window. I just, as soon as you said rainbow and I opened my eyes, there they were. <laughs> now just, and now the, the light has changed or the sun went in and they're faded, but they were there a minute ago, two of them right in front of me. Oh. <laughs> um. I had a sense of the overlighting devas of some of the mountains that were um, coming in as support. I felt the deva from Mary's Peak, which is in the coast range um, near uh, Philomath, Corvallis area. I felt Mount Hood and I felt the deva of a mountain to the east that I don't know the name of, but it was a very big, strong uh, eagle type energy. I felt eagles too earlier. Yeah, and I got the sense that um, they were also being connected to Mount Shasta's Deva and that there was this kind of this long um, grid that covered the whole of the Willamette Valley from Southern Oregon all the way up to uh, where the Willamette meets uh, the Columbia. And uh, I just got this, this feeling that it was being held in this container of the devas and that they were helping to connect it to, um, they were helping connect the sacred energy of the fairies and the portals and, and the place there, which has got its own power to other places in the area that have the similar energy and power, like creating a, a grid. Yeah. I can't really explain it with words right now. No, I totally get, well, I get yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. That kind of linking up places so that they create more light because they support each other. Yes. Right. Linking. Like land yeah. doing what we're doing here. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Cause there's other little pockets of these really high vibrational places where, where either people are doing the work or the nature is just there in its pureness. Um, where there's a lot of fairies and other devas and, and elementals and they're just strengthening and connecting to the grid, kind of rebuilding oh. maybe. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, I've done that other places and I do, I feel like it's kind of networking just like we do. Just like, and also yeah. like the trees, how the trees share resources oh. through their roots. So it's a, yeah, the places actually do the same thing. Yeah. And one of the beings I work with is the blue elf. So I didn't know if that was Summer who you saw, but it's a large blue being. Um, but I know there's different ones. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to ask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, one of his big things is to link lands and to encourage, like, if you're working on, you know, land, like, well, there's sister and brother, there's like different lands that should all be connected. And I've had that vision years ago too of like, you know, each point of light, whether it's land or people, the more power, powerful we grow and the more we link, like we fill it all in until Gaia is really 
you know, blazing with light, the whole thing, right? So I think right now there's a lot of those connections are really important. Um, those kind of grids, different kinds of grids, right? Nice, I love all these. Um, anyone else wanna? So oh, this is Danielle, and I definitely sense the Native Americans coming in and um, could see them more in their ancient, um, so not in present tense, but um, the ancestors. And then I also tuned in to the two gentlemen that um, are the owners of the land and it was almost as if they have a bit of confusion that's swirling around them. And so mm -hmm. that I was spending a bit of time just helping to send um, clarity for them um, so that, you know, whatever decision they make about the future, um, they're able to do that in a clear way. And then, um, just the sense of it was that um, there's a welcoming of um, more activity on the land and it being used um, for a good purpose. And then the last thing was that it does seem to be a connection point. I wasn't quite sure what that meant, but I was resonating as I was hearing about Mary's Peak and um, Mount Hood and um, what I imagine maybe is Mount Jefferson as the, the large mountain, um, but it seems to be, um, I guess, encouraging even strengthening of that um, connection. Nice, yeah. It's kind of interesting too. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I know there's some sort of interesting events that occur on the land as well as the Fairy Congress and our sister events. And some of them have a kind of sexual play nature. Let's just put it that way. Um, and I don't know like what the energy's like. So I think, you know, just to know that goes on there. I got, yeah, I got something similar that they, now that they've had a, a taste of like what can happen, they're like, oh, if there's more stuff like this that wants to happen. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Like, let's look at, we can choose more who yeah. wants to come, the kind of groups that can come yeah. there yeah, and not just take whoever shows up or has been there for a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, Andy or Rebecca, do you have anything you wanted to share, either one? Uh, Rebecca? Yeah, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Rebecca? Um, yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. Um, well, I also definitely felt um, like the spirits of their there are like more tribes around here than I can track of, but um, I invited as many as names I could remember and I definitely felt that presence. Um, and I also felt like there was some kind of, like maybe this land was also maybe a little bit um, being worked on as well as there. So maybe that was also, I don't know if, if anything in Oregon wants to connect with things in Northern Arizona, but um, maybe that was part of what was going on. And then um, I'm outside and like the birds uh, just started kind of going a little bit crazy and <laughs> gathering around quite a bit um, and chirping quite a bit. Um, Cause it, like they were all up in this tree in front of me and then they were all in the flowers behind me. Um, probably like a couple dozen of them at least. Um, and I felt like that was uh, related to this work. I don't think that was a coincidence. 
Um, and as far as like any kind of visual thing, um, I saw like a red heart. Um, I don't know if you said something about shapes or, um, but I just saw this like very bright red heart. Um, you know, as some as like a shape and a color that might be feeling. And then um, I saw like a female figure, but I'm not really sure who she was. So. Okay. Yeah, I think that covers it. Great. That's a beautiful image. Yeah, the symbols, um, I didn't mention at the beginning too much, but right before I went to the fairy Congress, I kept getting this message from the fairies to create symbols or like tune into the symbols they had and that when we put them on the land that they have a purpose. And so I actually did that. We did that as a group and we were speaking what it was about. And then I was laying the mica and we were doing our hands and it was a really powerful um, experience, which was kind of like a new, newer thing of how to do that. Um, and I also did it down in the middle of the circle that we'd meet um, after later on. Um, but it kind of, yeah, came in like Summer was mentioning, like right when we started, it's like, oh yeah, do some symbols again. And so I, I didn't even know exactly what I was doing. I just let my hand move. But um, but yeah, the heart is another symbol, right? The red heart, it's beautiful. Thanks for sharing, Rebecca. And Sandy? Well, I'm getting something that's not comfortable. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the land on Google Earth and the property is between a lot of open farmland and mm -hmm. uh, it looks like other privately owned property and what I'm feeling from the the name is the Mills Brothers Ranch um, has a blue dot where it's located and I'm feeling compression mm -hmm. uh, like it's being squeezed in some manner um, um, to keep it from expanding in some way I really don't know what this is about but it it was very uncomfortable okay um yeah. but did anybody else everything you said is so beautiful i hate to even bring this up no, but this is really important thank you um it really okay. makes total sense even though i didn't have that physical experience i think more because mm -hmm. i'm holding space too for the group but um but it kind of makes sense the way it's sort of wedged in there like there's mm -hmm. farmlands all around and there's sort of that expansive openness of those hills that are a little higher. And then you move down into this valley and it's sort of a little hidden, you know, with the trees and it's sort of how okay. kind of geography of that. But I think that might be mm -hmm. something, let's go in again and kind of. Um, I have well, the other thing, the other thing that really got my attention was a vulture. Okay. And it's Death energy. like, well, that or possessive, meaning I want that property, you know, um, land grab okay. or whatever this, this could be. That came up this, during the event that there's did a lot of okay. eyes of other people that own property around there that are coveting uh -huh. want it and so it's sort of like oh I just got chills. They, yeah they know that they're older so I think there's a lot of um interest okay. in swooping in and I think that's why the spirits are like you guys need to really work on this because okay it could easily be swept you know these whether it's greed or you know they want to protect it or they whatever you know right they, they want it for themselves and they're you know their own uses right like there is a lot of that energy so i think you totally tapped into what um that's oh, okay for. yeah well drawing on that i know you're doing a lot of work on the land have you done ethereal work like um sometimes when i'm working i put a dome over myself yeah with indigo light yeah. so that i can't be seen Mm -hmm. 
but and then the angels are all around you know um so i don't know how that fits with what you all do but somehow it feels threatened to me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 that we are working multi-dimensionally on this yeah. all of us um yeah even when we're on the land it's nice being very physical with it and doing the offerings and being there and you know meeting the trees but it's mm -hmm. also this work i'd say most the fairy congress is very ethereal it's very much multi-dimensional everyone that's working there in this whole event yeah so, okay so yeah all that's great was someone else have something to add it seemed like I thought I had a. Oh, I know. I think the 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 sense of being squeezed. I had something like that with the Sasquatch. They were like, I don't know. You know, they said, "Oh, we don't normally." It was it. They it felt a little. What's the word compressed for them. Yeah. Or, you know, it wasn't. They said it's not the type of area we normally go to because it is so compressed and yeah mm. but it also makes it like i keep thinking that word concentrated you yeah. know because yeah. it's like it yeah. doesn't have a big place to stretch out yeah. but then what's there especially everything we've been doing with it it's becoming like very powerful in a concentrated way right so that might be something maybe for a moment we can go back in and just look at that and also if there's anything else communication wise from the land council about what wants to um yeah if there's anything that wants to happen for kind of the the end of the season um or going forward or you know at this moment but then even going forward too so the word refugio definitely resonates I, oh yeah I know, one of the the names of the place but in terms of that kind of concentrated place a refuge um, yeah is that kind of what the word means in spanish yeah refugio there's um uh oh my goodness i'm not gonna remember her name off the top of my head um there's a woman that's wrote written a book and she she writes a lot about refugio um um i have it on my website so i should know it um <laughs> donna haraway yeah and her book making kin in the hulu scene she talks about refugios as these places that mm. help evolution happen because oh. many things are able to come into the okay. space Ooh. and interact I'm getting a chill that this is what this is and to really honor that right a place for evolution and the name of the book was making kin um yeah i'll put the link in the chat um it's called staying with the trouble making kin in the hulu scene it's a really great book um yeah it sounds amazing and there's a podcast about it too um that's really beautiful to listen to. Um, you can see if I can find that. Yeah, there might be some things in there that are helpful for this land. I think um, maybe that image I had of that really bright, really expansive heart might be like addressing a little bit the sense of like compaction. Mm -hmm. So I'd be curious, like if we go back in one more time and see maybe if it can shift oh. a little. To go back in and focus on that, is that what you're saying? Well, just if we go back in, you know, and just see what might shift. Yeah, exactly. It, it seems like that was maybe it was beginning to um, maybe break free a little bit of that. Yeah, exactly. Great. 
Okay, why don't we go ahead then and just um, move back into a heart space. You can visualize that red heart or the rainbow of fire and just see what the land um, and the land council wants to share. We can start, start bringing back, coming back. feels like there's a lot of work being done 
Um, everything everyone mentioned was such a gift to put all together and see the, um, the kaleidoscope or the energy of this place and all the spirits. So I'm so grateful for all of you to be here. Um, I guess I'll share since I'm chatting here. Um, as soon as we went in, I just felt like, ah, like this permission to expand and like the spiral going out. And then all that rainbow energy was able to like breathe and like open up, make more space. Um, it was like it created its own um, kind of Merkaba, um, but was able to just take up more space. And then I really felt that um, presence of like the Bigfoot, Sasquatch and the mountains and all the beings that were above, below and all around that were like helping to hold this container for this um, condensed place. And that how much of a connector, like seeing that connector um, that we talked about. So um, yeah, I'll let anyone else chime in. Yeah, I felt well that. Go ahead. Oh, I um, I felt a real strengthening, and there was an acknowledgement of the um, the covetedness of other people, and it was there was gratitude that felt like by us working to strengthen the light in the land that it would be able to hold itself. And, you know, it's a darkness is always attracted to light, but if yeah. you can keep the light strong, then it can keep away the darkness. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> well, I, um, I saw this gorgeous cobalt blue um, all through the valley. And then that little, um, it wasn't a lynx. What did you call it? Um, uh, mountain cat, mountain the mountain or uh, some kind of wildcat? Yeah, wildcat, bobcat. Yeah, he's uh, he's a guardian and mm -hmm. a protector. And I kept hearing the word centurion. I thought, wait, I think a centurion being a Russian soldier, not Russian, but um, <laughs> Roman. Roman. And uh, but he was offended when I. I've said that he's a cute little spirit, but oh, he, that's he the name of the cat. Yeah. Oh. And he prowls. Yeah, he's protecting the borders. I guess he doesn't want the encroach encroachment either. He feels that. So I just, he's such a playful spirit, but don't try and pet him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fun. So I enjoyed that. It's beautiful. Love it. Centurion, guardian. Yeah. Well, I'll follow along with that theme. Um, I was, I just kept hearing this mantra of um, free and playful. Mm -hmm. it, it wanted that kind of energy to happen there. And it was almost as if um, it didn't want to, um, this is going to sound weird, but it didn't want to be grown up. <laughs> um, <laughs> definitely, um, there, there was a, a, just a, yeah, just a very playful kind of energy. And, um, and then I also saw the, the spiral um, happening and the very brightly colored ribbons that mm -hmm. were kind of like flying um, as part of the, the spiral energy. <laughs> I love that. I don't want to grow up. That's kind of what's there. All these events like that of our childlike nature, you know, yeah. whichever group comes, it's sort of a, has that theme. <laughs> the importance of that. I saw that expansiveness right away as well. Um, for me, I, I just saw from the heart, it like expanded in the 
or not expanded, um, kind of like light or beams, like in the four directions. And that happened like almost immediately. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, and I don't know if this was like me that I was perceiving or it, but it kind of reached a point where um, it felt like it was done. And then, um, I mean, like done for now. And then I, yeah. I saw this image of just like, um, like ocean waves coming out on the shore. And it felt like, uh, like the request was to kind of like, just do it in chunks. Like, um, like to do this kind of work you know, maybe a handful of times, like in small chunks, you know? Yeah. Like you would with a person, like you would with a person, I guess. Yeah. So I'm not sure like how much of that was the land and how much of that was maybe just my body talking to me, but that was <laughs> Yeah, thanks for sharing. I kind of was feeling that too, Rebecca, the, I think a lot of us like, the desire, I mean, even Summer saying let's, you know, what she was getting was like, oh yeah, like to make this a continual kind of check-in, I would be happy to do that, you know, every quarter or something or whenever it feels like, you know, it wants to happen. Um, mm -hmm. That might be a nice way to, to keep working, you know, having, and it's also like a great way for all of us to learn, like, to work over time with place together, like one place at once. Cause a lot of the work I've done, like we've been um, mostly people are working on their own land and then we'll get together and, you know, and sometimes it will be, we'll all work on one, but I think there's a lot of power um, to doing that and like making community about that. And so this is such a perfect place to really focus. Cause it does feel really key. It feels important. like. It felt like even what we just did today, like I get it more, like the importance of its location and what, where it's positioned and how it's connected. And so does anyone else have anything? I'll share. Um, I really had a strong sense of the connectedness to other places and how that's really shoring up the the land. So that was the first thing that that came and um, um, the the word boundaries work was like you know it was like really strengthening its ability to hold its own um, space. And so towards the end, um, they asked me about um, uh, a particular power that I work with, with boundaries work, which is a little bit different than most boundaries work. And so um, I did bring that in. Um, it's uh, Machid Labdron, who's the founder of the Chod practice, um, which is a Tibetan Buddhist practice of being able to transform energy. And so they asked for some of that support. Um, so they have the support of the light and then they have the support of this like alchemical um, being able to transform um, energy as well. So, yeah. Beautiful. That whole thing, um, just to add something that came in this week, because it was really strongly, I know it was with Danielle doing some of this work, um, but it was about boundaries and the importance of um kind of the new way of protection, you know, what that really means and that we're all learning. And so I was kind of going through like the practices I've learned over the years and things I still do. And then, um, and doing this kind of light work, like the global light work, it just felt really important um, to recognize the power of sacred geometry of just the visualizing, the holding the energy, like, just even, you know, visualizing like for ourselves one, right? That that's to mm -hmm. me what the sphere is. It's not like blocking energy. It's more of just, mm -hmm. there's a, a kind of auric field or a field that's of that. So I kind of was seeing that with the land too, how 
Um, I know this is a sort of special way that you work, Summer, that's beautiful. Um, but that sacred geometry is a powerful way as well for, for both land, yeah, and ourselves. So thanks for now, the word. Along that same theme, um, I got the words um, purging the interference like a low, like static, like a low static, and then creating uh, through like sound. I was thinking the singing bowls or just singing the songs and so much singing goes on at the land anyway. But um, the more that happens, it just, it lifts, um, it just lifts the energy and the static can't get through. The static just falls away and it purges that, um, yeah, purges that. And then, um, so if we sing, even if we're thinking about it, if we just send a song or, or our crystal bowl or Tibetan bowls and just kind of send that to the land to just take those sound waves to create that interference uh from the interference interfere with the interference <laughs> Love it. No, losing my words yay oh my god that's so beautiful yeah <laughs> yep no interference here we're gonna sing and play and i love it how all the events are so much song and singing right so a lot of the medicine of just us being there is so of course so powerful for the land. So is there anyone else feeling there's anything else at this time? Um, I know, you know, like Rebecca was saying, and we feel the continuation of connection, but um, no, it feels pretty complete for me. Does anyone else feel? And of course, I was just go we can each also do our own connection like you say do the singing and sound right. song there and what else were you going to say sandy well uh the thunder beings are really talking right now mm -hmm. so i don't know if they're applauding our efforts or what but yeah they've been really loud outside oh yeah. nice I just want to thank you, Camilla, for responding to my, you know, request and for gathering us. Thank you for this. I just really. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, thank you for bringing it forward. I think it's a beautiful offering and it, it sort of was such a beautiful way too, because it's sort of like, oh, I have, I really want to do more community around this work. And so here we go, <laughs> bring all the different people together. So you guys got to connect, which is great too. Yes, thank you so More much. More connections, right? I mean, that's really what we're here to connect with the land and everyone. So thanks all for being part of it. So why don't we close up our circle? We'll just ask that um, the land, maybe you can do a final little chime and send that to the land. symbols that the land needs to move into this next season, maybe more of a season of rest from the humans. <laughs> and anything else that needs to be um, completed or honored or recognized. If we didn't see it in this, in this call, may you bring it forward to whoever um, it's best to communicate with and like to give our deep gratitude for um, all the spirits of the land, the indigenous spirits, the spirits of nature, the elementals, fairies, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, the angels, devas, the guardian 
um, centurion, the buffalo spirit, the calipula, calipians, salits, and grand roan, the trees, the waters, the willow woman, the ancient trees, so many different beautiful spirits. And allow their um, this land to really blossom and awaken and harmonize and balance the way that it chooses with its land council and how we can support that. And thank you to the mountains as well and all the others for your blessings and gifts. So we close the circle and release everyone back to their perfect place. And we also close the container, Phoenix sit, and release that to the sun. <laughs> This feels so much gratitude and such beautiful light and lightness. It's like, it's what I love about this work too, how it heals mm -hmm. us and helps us feel better and lighter and um, so appreciated. So keep up the good work, you guys. Jamila, I still couldn't hear your bowl. Oh, really? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I, I, I could hear it. I can hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I turned my original sound on so that you can, but, um, but Sandy last time she was on my patron call and she couldn't hear it on there. Yeah. So, I'm know. wondering if it's something I've done, you know, I don't, ah, something just turned green. No. <laughs> there you go. Now it will work. You want me to try again? Well, it's my mute mic and it's going, it's kind of flashing green. Here, so is that again. something I'm supposed to do? No. Should I? I don't know. You'll have to find a techie person or Google it. Like, can't hear. Okay. Um, right. Because I'm okay. not the one that can figure that kind of stuff out. But Got it. But it's good to know that you can so that you can find out how. Yeah. Okay. I will try. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank, Thank you, that. ladies. Hello. Good to be with you. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Have a great day.